that's it, you know? You don't have to do anything more, done. Right, so we're going to go with a hard finish that is durable and we're gonna finish it in four coats. We're gonna finish the finish in four coats. So what we're gonna use is a cut and polish by Ubit Polishers, the company here in Australia. And we're gonna use the Shellow Wax Glow. It's a shellac wax based finish and four coats and will be done on this little jewelry box. So let's get into it. So this is Triple E Ultra Shine. It's got abrasive within the paste so that's what it looks like there. It's got really fine abrasive within the paste. Whatever grit you finished, preferably around 1200 grit. On the bottle it says 600, but if you can manage to sand your work up to 1200 grit, this will allow your piece to reach 20 to 30,000 grit. And this is the Glow, Shallow Wax Glow. It's got shellac and wax within it. And this is what it looks like here. It's all safe. That was, that was way too much. <laughs> That's what it looks like there. And it goes really hard. So I'm gonna go get this off my fingers. But uh, it is food safe. Uh, and it also, within 20 days, cross links and becomes super, super durable and hard. If you're looking at finishing a piece that's going to be in a showroom or up on a, on a shelf and you're never gonna touch it, one coat of this will get you by and should be durable enough. But if it's gonna be something that's handled like this little jewelry box here and it's gonna be put in bags and stuffed around and opened and closed all the time, three coats, four coats will make a more durable, hard finish. So what you'll need is first of all, before anything is a little tray, you can see I've made an absolute mess of it. But that sits there just in case anything falls onto the lathe, which you can see happens. You need your Triple E cut and polish compound, and then you need your glow, shallow wax glow there, and then a cloth. Right, before I get started, I just want to quickly show you something. This is flannelette sheet, and I cut strips of it like this, and this I fold it over, over itself, and then over again, and then in half, and then over again pretty much so it's like a big wad within your hands now I'm going to start with the triple E here the cut and polish compound and how I like to do it is get a bit on the rag there and then work it over the surface like this all over it before I turn it on and then I can see if I've missed any little spots out on the rim there like so and when I'm turning I hold the rag again like a pincher like a pincher like this so the polishes the cut and polish is all up there I'm going to get stuck into it and I'm going to turn the lathe my variable seed lathe I'm going to turn it down Jeez, I'm going to turn it down first and then start it slow <laughs> turn it on that time and then I'm going to start turning the lathe up gradually grab my cloth Put it on, put my face shield down. I hold my wrist like this, and that just gives me extra support as I'm pushing the fabric across the surface. Just gonna give it a bit more speed. And I just keep working that polish all over it. I'm pushing quite firm at the moment, so I'm pushing the, the cloth into the grain quite firm firmly firmly and then to get it on the outside there make sure I've got into that little cranny just there I'm just going to fold the cloth over if I can apply this finish anyone can very straightforward and then make sure I've got it in that shoulder in, in here I want to get it right into there and you can work both sides, there's no issue working both sides. And now let's have a look. See how it's looked, see how it's looking. Oh. Now that might look good, and that might look like it's finished to you, that's ready to go. There's no issues there. You have to remember that this is the cut and polish, it's not the finish. So 
I'm just going to get into that shoulder just one little bit more, just real quick. Away we go. And you'll feel the heat. I'm feeling the heat under here. It's quite hot. And now I'm just going to fold that flannelette back over, get a fresh piece, and just buff it off. Just going to get rid of any of that excess that's on there. Clean it all off. Make sure there's none on there. Right in there, in there. Awesome. Okay, so now I'm going to apply the glow. So I give it, I give it a bit of a mix up. And now I'm gonna put probably the size of my fingernail onto the rag. That's a big fingernail. And then I'm gonna rub it all over the piece with the lathe stopped. Get a little bit more, I reckon. I want to get it into that shoulder in there. And then I'm going to turn the lathe on. Shield down. And place plenty of pressure onto that rag. And I'm not moving my fingers around. I'm maintaining the same spots on the rag with my fingers. See how that's looking. So one thing I want to mention about when you are applying this finish here, as well as the shallow wax glow, when you are applying it and you make a blue, there might be something that you've you've noticed and you're like, oh no, I've put too much on and now it's making a big film somewhere. It's so easily fixed. You just go back to the the triple E. You put the triple E on and then you do the same process with the triple E. You cut and polish it, buff it off, and then start again with your glow. Turn the lathe down. Gonna go a bit more. Lathe back up. Even with the size of the wad that I have, I can feel that it's getting hot underneath my fingers. So one thing I want to mention before we move on is when you're using the glow sometimes if you're leaving it in the one spot for too long uh, you can actually burn your piece with the friction polish it'll leave a it'll leave a mark a burn mark around in certain spots particularly on hard shoulders like this if that does happen just go back to the old faithful the triple e and then just start again and that'll get rid of it straight away so like i said this is like the this is like an eraser of glow on there and I'm going to work it around the piece and then flick the lathe on hopefully it doesn't flick on my camera and then just slowly work up the speed Let's see how that looks I'm going to do another two on there just so it's the same on the inside it's just so easy to apply you, you really can't go wrong if you if you're doing all the sort of what I think you know the basic things that that I've picked up on and just keeping your fingers in the same position and and not moving them around and using your alternative hand just to steady your your applicating hand the hand that you're putting it on with and just just work it across. I think if I sort of think of it as this is actually a tool, I, I approach finishing with a, a different mindset. That's, that's me anyway. I, I approach it differently. I don't think of it as just whacking a polish on or a finish and then calling it a day. I think of it as, as a tool when I'm doing this. That sort of 
changes my mindset a little bit. And like I said, this is just flannelette and I just sort of go down to uh, your local fabric store or a charity sort of place where they sell secondhand goods, clothing and stuff. And you can find sheets of this stuff, you know, and you're also supporting the community as well by buying, you know, all the secondhand clothes and yeah, helps everyone out. And you get a something to polish up your pieces with. Try not to get flannelette with big colouring and all that type of stuff in it because that can sort of leach through. And I think this was my mother-in-law's. So. Take this out. I just want to show you. In my opinion, it's just a hard, easy to apply finish and you can't go wrong. Three coats and that's finished now. I don't have to do anything more to that. That's done. Oh, apart from I'll finish turning off the back or the top because this is the lid. But that's it. No, that's not the lid. That's the body. I wanted to show you just without all the cameras and the lights, just how nice this is. And I'm just using my phone uh, and wanting to show you some of the other ring boxes that I've done here. And that's that's with, with no finish on it, that there. And then you flick it over, and it's got the finish. And that's just the sun, sunlight on those pieces. And you can just see the chatoints within, within that grain there. It's just beautiful. So if you enjoyed the video and you think I've earned it, give us a thumbs up. And thank you so much for stopping by and checking out this video. If you haven't seen it yet, I also did a video on Danish oil wet sanding, and I've also done another video on Aussie oil with Triple E. Aussie oil gives your your pieces just an opalescent finish. It just makes it really pop. If you've got really figured pieces, it just makes those that figuring just come right out. I really hope you enjoyed the video. I'm no expert on any of this stuff. I'm just here passing on information as I'm learning to hopefully out, hopefully help other people out that are in my position or, or wanting to learn a little bit more about other stuff that's out there. So cheers. Thanks very much. And I will see you and talk to you all directly. Cheers.